Yeah, this gives a totally different vibe. So I, I, I really like trying this out, this side. Good. Now just face me. Straight. Cool. Okay. Now, let me just try to create a curve. So there we go. We're going to just try a few in the front. Like yeah, exactly. Exactly. Almost See, like, I like. Almost like not even touching my hands. Totally. Genteel. Okay, let's try these. Grab a sandwich or two. That's a fruit. Oh my gosh. Yeah, super cute. Uh huh. I brought out another one. He goes, now that is not the one. <laughs> That's what he said. He said it's another one. So we must really like this. Yeah, we talked about it last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he goes, that is we not the one. We were a rough trap last night. Okay. <laughs> My client, Jeannie Walsh. Jeannie is a fashion stylist and a project manager for many different designers. And she's also my ghostwriting client. We are working on her upcoming book titled Wired Wrong. And we're on set. She was doing a photo shoot for her book cover. And Jeannie, I'm really excited about this talk right now because not only from the other interviews that I did while you were doing your photo shoot, but just um, so many of my clients and people that I con ha make contact with in general have struggled with so many of the things that you talk about in your book. So let's start this interview off with you telling people what the intention is behind this book that we're working on together. You are so amazing, Jeannie. I wanna talk about a recent, um, conversation that you had with your father because you know the book is titled wired wrong because he used to tell you that he he's sorry you were wired wrong and recently your father um, expressed to you that he forgives you for everything that you put him through when you were a child and as we were discussing that conversation I told you to stop and think about that for a moment because it, it validates what we're doing here with your book. We're trying to destigmatize mental health, right? Would a parent tell their child who had cancer when they're young, who, whose medical bills were extremely high and the parent had to work two, three jobs to pay it off, who required a lot of attention, who cried all the time because they were in pain, would a parent tell that child who survived cancer when they're older, I forgive you for all that you put me through. No, a parent would not do that, right? They wouldn't do that. Why is that? That's because um, people think that, oh, well, it's cancer, it's a disease, right? It's not the child's fault. But somehow we've related mental illness, mental issues that someone's experiencing, and most of the time it's from trauma, as we discussed, and we blame them and we shame them for that. And so the whole point of Jeannie making herself vulnerable and exposing all of her, you know, truths and her stories is to show people that we all have mental health and many of us have been through trauma and there is, there is no reason that you need to feel ashamed for it, right? Absolutely. It's about how you handle it. And so I wanted you um, to talk with people a little bit about the experiences that you had, not just being a mother, but being in the fashion industry and the things that you were dealing with behind the scenes, like, you know, when you 5150 and the breakdowns, but how you were able to deal with all of that um, and still create success for yourself. That's a very interesting um, question and um, a little difficult to answer because it has been tough. Um, and every day still to this day is a challenge. It'll never be over for me. And for anybody with mental health problems, it'll, it'll always be continuing. And um, it's, you know, it's taken many years for me to get to the point where I'm at. And in learning to understand my triggers knowing them, expressing them to my loved ones so they know, because sometimes they don't know why I'm upset or why I've had a meltdown. Um, it's also very important to know, like if you are in something like working in the fashion industry or doing productions, 
every single production I, I work on, I put my heart and soul into. I, I, and I'm known for executing my productions flawlessly, but because I put every bit of energy and heart into it. So was my advice to someone who does want to get into the, like a, bi a big industry, like the fashion industry, very competitive, very, it's fast paced. It's, it's the, the fantastical world of fashion is amazing. And I think that with uh, people, especially people with bipolar, they have to find some sort of creative outlet. My creative outlet is, is, is fashion. And um, I use this as an opportunity to get away from the negative energy. I ha and uh, what I love about fashion is it's always something new. It's always ever evolving and always changing. And, um, but there's, there's times when I've had productions where I've, I literally have had a nervous breakdown the next day because I've put in every bit I have into it. So knowing that now, I prepare for it. Like I, I took my medicine two days before the shoot. I know tomorrow in the next two days I can't talk to anyone and I just need downtime to relax my brain. And and there's a, it's, a, it's a learning curve for anybody who has it. And um, it's a, very challenging but it's doable and there is light at the end of the tunnel and you just can't give up. You just have to keep going, pick yourself up. And for me, it took until actually meeting Shireen and talking to Shireen to understand, like I, I knew I was gonna be in the fashion industry and I knew I was gonna be working with celebrities and you know, cause I, I've, that's been since I've been in my twenties. But I didn't know my real purpose until just recently. And my real purpose is to share my story and It'll make you cry, and it, 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 is, it may offend you. Even the name itself may offend you, but there's a reason behind that. The reason is, and if you read on and, and understand that the reason I chose certain things or to, to tell you about being 5150, it's maybe if someone is having a down time and they're afraid to get help, maybe if they read about how it was when I was in, then they might not be so afraid because it, it's not all that bad. Is it scary? Yeah, it's scary as hell. But, the, but you're, when you're in there, you're surrounded with other people that are experiencing the same thing as you. And that moment, I felt this, an escape from the rest of the world, and I liked being in. I loved the art therapy. I got to kind of, you know, ha, ha, release and, and figure out why I was thinking I was in and learning to be mindful. There's so many meditation. They teach you meditation when you're, when you're in, in the hospital. They, so I've picked up a lot of good habits from being hospitalized. And, um, and I've been hospitalized more than once. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's no picnic, but it's not, it's not as bad as people. People are so afraid to get help. And it's, it's better to get help because you're here, everyone's here for a reason. And just to find your purpose and to know it and follow through. And don't give up. Just, if you're ever going to give up, just reach out and call. Talk to someone. You know, I'm I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. People can reach out to me if they want to talk to me. I am more than happy to share my story verbally or to help someone get through a hard time. That's I I, I feel like I, I I'm at that point where I can help others because I've learned so much and I've had like what I would want to call like an awakening or an awareness. Honestly, Jeannie, you are like the epitome of rising above because um, I'll get to my question in a minute, but I just remember when you were sharing your whole story with me and as you were talking to me about all the different abuse that you experienced because you had a mental illness, because you were vulnerable and taken advantage of and you know, put in all these different situations, and we were talking about how we can both see how easy it is for a woman especially that suffers with this to just feel like they want to give up. Mm -hmm. Feel like, oh, you know, like this is my life. Let me go drink it away. Let me go do drugs and escape, right? And we, we were talking about how we, can un we understand how that can happen. You know, and so anybody that's listening to this who can resonate, um, honestly, Jeannie's story is proof that it is possible. It's possible to change that from being your reality because reality is what we accept it to be. And Jeannie has never accepted that as being her permanent reality. And um, I wanted to ask you, 
when we were talking about your full story, I know that it was really one of the first times you ever opened up and shared everything. I want you to talk to me about that experience and that how that has helped you with your healing journey and knowing that you're doing something purposeful by not just talking about it, but you're creating something. It's interesting because when, when you sent me the first section of the book after we, we you know, you, we've record, done a lot of recordings and talking, I started reading and I'm like, oh my gosh, this poor girl. And I'm like, wait, oh, that's me. And I'm like, the book is about me. And I was like, oh, that poor girl. But, you know, it's, it, it was a big release. Um, it made me cry several times, several times. I read it to my husband and I read it to my, uh, one of my daughters. And, um, it was emotional for me to hear what my life has been like because I've never looked at it from the outside. I've always just lived it. And looking at it from the outside, its perspective in when you started writing with me, it, it, it just changed the way I look at myself. And I, I, I know that, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> It's it, it's tough. It's just it's a very it, it is emotional, like and and, and hard to um, share all of this. But I I'm hoping that by sharing my experiences of my childhood and a lot of the heartache that I went through, that hopefully it may inspire or, or save somebody. And if I can help save somebody or if I can help inspire somebody, whether it's in the fashion industry or if they need help with mental health um, issues, I'm here for you. And that is what this is for. And um, this will, the book will lead to other things and ways to reach out. Feel free to reach out to me. Shoot me a message if you want to talk. I'm here for you. You're not alone. And I think that's what everyone needs to understand is they're not alone. We're here. For, there's people that are that really care, and that understand what the illness is about, and want to help. And that's why I'm sharing my experiences and hoping to save some lives and help other people that are struggling with this. And the other thing is to know that you are not wired wrong, right? You and I have talked about this. That like so many people that are diagnosed with bipolar or schizophrenia, they have a creative side. They're creators. And that's what you and I talk about we're, and we're writing about in the book, how it's important to find what you can create with that energy. Because if you could find something to harness that energy in, then you start making it a purposeful thing, right? Rather than a self-destructive thing. So I'm really excited for your book to be released soon. It's titled Wired Wrong. And I want to give you an opportunity to thank everybody that came on set today to work on this um, photo shoot, the book cover with you. Well, first and foremost, I'd like to thank my husband, Jason Mumau, <laughs> um, for being the first person ever in my life who's actually taken the time and effort to research uh, mental health issues or but I have I'm diagnosed with several things I have bipolar borderline personality disorder disassociative fusion and uh, anxiety disorder which is a lot I'm a handful <laughs> I'm definitely a handful but um, you know it has been a learning curve for him I, I want to thank him for all the hard work he's put into this Shireen I want to thank you um, my meeting you was just a complete We've spoke about this, a divine intervention. Yes, I, I literally, I have like some sort of spiritual connection um, with um, like the, almost like the sixth sense, which I think maybe a lot of creatives do. And um, sometimes things just come to me or I'll have premonitions, I'll know things ahead of time. When I found Shireen, I was literally just going through LinkedIn and something stopped me. I did not read anything about her. I literally picked up the phone and just called her. And we talked, it was only supposed to be 15 minutes, we talked for like two hours. <laughs> it was just nonstop. It was just, it was an immediate connection. And I knew, I'm like, this is, this is who I need to work with. This is the woman I need to be in my life to help me spread the word. And I'm, I'm grateful for you. 
Michelle Pryor, thank you so much for being here and for everything you've done today. And I'm so grateful. We met five years ago, and it's just so amazing how things have looped around. Jason Lee, thank you so much for letting us use the studio and, and photographing things. And I really appreciate it. Frank Ruiz from Channel 15, you have a special place in my heart, and you always will. Um, I want to thank... I definitely want to thank um, Colleen Quinn. Um, she's a big part of my life. And, and Shay Charles, yes, he's my hair designer. Um, and we have Tiff, uh, Tiffany Clay did my makeup today. Um, Nancy McDonald, also from FIDM. I, if it wasn't for, it was funny, I met Nancy years ago after she came to one of my productions. And we ended up going out for cocktails. And it was Nancy, after talking to me for a couple hours, I was, I'm a very honest and, you know, I don't sugarcoat it. And in the book, it's nothing sugarcoated. I just, I'm going to tell it like it is. If you like it, that's great. If you don't like it, I'm sorry if I hurt you. But if I sugarcoat it, then it's going to be like every other book, and I'm not going to do that. But I told Nancy, who had no idea I had bipolar, and she was so fascinated talking to with me. She, she told me, you should write a book. So I reached out to her just recently, and it was Nancy who reached out to Michelle and helped me put this all together. And I'm grateful for everyone that has been part of this. And um, you know, I, I I I don't know what else to say. Like it brings tears to my eyes. What a support team that I have. And I hope that everybody else out there that is suffering can find the right support group because that's what you need. You need positive energy. If there's negative energy in your life, let it go. It is not going to help. You need to get the negativeness out of your life and just stay with the people that are positive and supportive. That's the most important thing. You're able to find Jeannie Walsh. She is on Facebook under um, Jeannie, Walsh. Jeannie Walsh. I'm under Facebook under Shereen Rivera and all other platforms. She's also on Instagram and LinkedIn. And um, the book will be released in early 2022. Sounds weird saying that, 2022. <laughs> but good, I like the numbers. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so stay tuned and, and look out for it. Thank you.